Shalom Israel. Today's class is on wine. And is it a sin to drink wine or alcoholic beverages? Growing up in the Christian church, a lot of times we think that's a sin. But we're going to open up the Bible and find out is it a sin. Romans 15 and 4. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. Whatever was written aforetime. Read. Were written for our learning. It was written for our learning. Read. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures uh -huh. might have hope. So we're going to go on through these scriptures today. We're going to go and learn our history of our forefathers. And we're going to see. Was drinking wine or alcohol a sin according to the Bible? Let's go to John chapter 2 and verse 1. Because... Ultimately, when Christ came on the scene, the, uh, the Most High said, Here is my son, hear you him. Hear Christ. Let's see Christ on the matter of drinking wine or alcohol. John chapter 2 verse 1. In the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, uh -huh. and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. So, Jesus was at a wedding. Read. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. So they wanted wine. And the mother of Jesus, a righteous woman, came up to him and said, They don't have wine, Jesus. Read. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mm -hmm. Mine hour is not yet come. Read. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Mm -hmm. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Mm -hmm. Jesus saith unto him, Fill the water pots, water pots with water. Mm -hmm. And they filled them up to the brim. Now, he's, he's getting them prepped for this. All right, He said, Fill these water pots up with water. Let's see what he did. Read. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. Mm -hmm. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine. That what? Tasted the water that was made wine. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, turned water into wine. This was one of his first miracles. He turned water into wine at a marriage feast. Read. And knew not whence it was, uh -huh. but the servants which drew the water knew. Mm -hmm. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Read. And saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. Read. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, uh -huh. but thou hast kept the good wine until now. So the wine that he prepared was good. They were excited. They were happy. So if it was a sin for us to drink wine or drink alcohol, why did the Messiah do this? Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20. Let's find out. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 20. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it and Take it patiently, mm -hmm. but if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. Mm -hmm. This is acceptable with God. Verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, uh -huh. because Christ also suffered for us. So Christ suffered for us. Read. Leaving us an example. Leaving us what? An example. Christ left us an example when he turned water into wine. Read. That ye should follow his steps. That we should what? Follow his steps. So, it wouldn't be an issue for somebody to bring wine to a marriage. Read. Who did no sin. Who what? Did no sin. So according to the Bible, Christ left us an example that we should follow. So obviously Christ was not in the midst of sin for drinking or dealing with wine or alcoholic beverages. Right. Because right here it said he did no sin. Read, neither what? Neither was guile found in his mouth. So the Messiah, the one true, the one perfect man who did no sin, no sin dealt with alcohol. Now, let's get some more scriptures dealing with the issue. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. If that's not enough, because I know uh, we have a lot of naysayers on this uh, topic. A lot of Sunday Christians that don't know the Bible at all. Right. Read that. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Drink no longer water. What? Drink no longer water. Drink no longer water. But use a little wine. But what? Use a little wine Read. for thy stomach's sake. Uh -huh. And not... And thine often affirmity. So the scripture says it's, it's, it's giving you a suggestion to drink a little wine. Why? Because it's it's proven that it's it's good for you when right. you drink it every 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 so often. If you drink every day, of course that's bad. But when you drink it in moderation, it's proven that it is good for you. Right. All right, from there, let's go to Judges 9 and 13. Judges chapter 9 and verse 13. Because Christians really, they really uh, leave a sad taste in everybody's mouth. They don't know the Bible at all. Read Judges chapter 9 verse 13. Mm -hmm. And the vine said unto them, 
Should I leave my wand? Should I leave my wand? Read. Which cheereth God? Which what? Cheereth God? Read. And man. Uh -huh. And go to be promoted over the trees? So according to the Bible, wine cheers God and man. So why would it not be uh, permissible for us to drink it, right? That wouldn't make any sense. Let's go to uh, Psalms 104 and verse 15. Keep in mind, these are all in the Bible. We're going to the Old Testament, the New Testament. And later on, we're going to the Apocrypha. Read that. Psalms chapter 104, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man. Read that again. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man. And wine that maketh glad the heart of men. Why do you think the Most High set up wine? Right. It was, it was created for us. Read. And oil to make his face to shine. Uh -huh. And bread which strengthens man's heart. Give me Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. So the wine was set up for us to drink it. The Most High set it up for us to make us glad, to make us happy. Why do you think you feel a certain way when you drink it? That's a natural effect. It's not, that's not something that's man-made. The Most High set it up like that. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. Mm -hmm. A feast is made for laughter, mm -hmm. and wine maketh merry. And what? Wine maketh merry. Exactly. That's why Christ knew when the wedding feast was going on. He said, I'm gonna make this wine. Everybody will be in a better mood if I if I if I create this water into wine. From there, let's go to um Sirach chapter 40 and verse 20. Sirach chapter 40 and verse 20. Sirach chapter 40, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Wine and music rejoiceth the heart. Wine and what? Music rejoiceth the heart. Wine and music rejoiceth the heart. So there's nothing wrong with you having to get together right. with your family, with your righteous individuals mm -hmm. that are keeping God's laws, having a little wine and a little music and drinking. There's nothing wrong with that at all according to the Bible. Right. Now, if you want to go by men, you can do that all day. But the Bible says there's nothing wrong. Now, what is wrong with drinking is when you go overboard, when you leave that zone of soberness, when it impairs your judgment. We're going to deal with that. Give me Tobit chapter 4 and verse 15. This is what's wrong when you are drinking. Because the Bible says you are to remain sober-minded. Tobit chapter 4 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Do that to no man which thou hatest. Uh -huh. Drink not wine to make thee drunken. What? Drink not wine to make thee drunken. Read. Neither let drunkenness go with thee in thy journey. So the scripture says don't drink wine to become drinking. To drunken. Mm -hmm. That's not why we drink it. It's not to get drunk. It's just to make you glad, to get you in that, in that mood. Like some brothers say, they get a buzz. Right. That's all it's for. After that, you fall back. Christians don't understand. From there, give me uh, Isaiah 5 and 11. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 11. All right? Because a lot of individuals, they feel guilty or they feel some type of way if they're drinking, and you shouldn't feel like that. All right? Isaiah chapter 5 verse 11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning. Woe unto them. Destruction to them that rise up early in the morning. Read. That they may follow strong drink. That they may follow strong drink. This is, this is what I'm telling you. It's not for you to be drinking all day and all night. That's not what it is. Read. That continue until night. Mm -hmm. Till wine inflames them. Till wine inflames you. You become a drunk. Right. A whiner, as the scriptures say. All right? That's not what it's for. It's set up for, for certain occasions and events having a good time there's nothing wrong with it if you waking up every morning to drink uh wine or alcohol you need to check yourself right all right from there let's go to uh Sirach 31. Sirach 31 and verse 25 and we're gonna read all the way down to 31. so wine is good like the scripture is about to read in moderation read that Sirach chapter 31 verse 25 uh -huh. show not that valiantness in wine uh -huh. For wine hath destroyed many. For what? For wine hath destroyed many. Wine hath destroyed many. Just like women. Does that mean that having a wife is bad? No. You got to use moderation, wisdom, judgment. Read. The furnace proveth the edge by dipping. Uh -huh. So doth wine the hearts of the proud by drunkenness. Read. Wine is as good as life to a man. Wine is as good as life to a man. Read. If it be drunk moderately. If it be drunk what? Moderately. A lot of y'all didn't understand that moderation is in the Bible. Right. Read. What life is then to a man that is without wine? The Most High says, what is life to a man without wine? Read. For it was made to make men glad. For it was what? Made to make men glad. That's what its purpose is. Read. 
Wine measurably drunk. And, measurably drunk, read. And in season. And what? In season. And in season, not at 7 o'clock in the morning. In season, read. Bringeth gladness of the heart uh -huh. and cheerfulness of the mind. Read. But wine drunken with excess uh -huh. maketh bitterness of the mind. That's that drunk, that wino at the club that's getting in a fight. Mm -hmm. The brother that can't go to any weddings and drink. Because he don't know how to drink in moderation. Read. With brawling and quarreling. Uh -huh. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool Read. till he offend. Uh -huh. It diminish it dis diminishes strength. It diminishes strength. That's that brother that's trying to get in the fight. He can't even stand up. Read. And make it wounds. Uh -huh. Rebuke not thy neighbor at the wine. So you're not supposed to rebuke your neighbor at the wine. Your brother's having a good time. Let him have a good time. As long as he's not drunk. If he's drunk, tell him to go home. Rebuke not your neighbor at the wine. On the same point, if your brother does not want to drink, leave him alone. Everybody doesn't have to drink. Read. And despise him not in his mirth. Uh -huh. Give him no despiteful words, mm -hmm. and press not upon him with urging him to drink. Read that again. And press not upon him with urging him to drink. So, if you got that brother or that sister that don't want to drink, the scriptures say leave him alone. Right. What are they doing in the world when they go to a party? Hey, drink. Hey, drink something. Hey, drink something. Exactly. No, the scriptures say you don't, you don't deal like that. All right? Last scripture. Let's go to Romans chapter 4 and verse 15. All right? At the end of the day, we're going to do everything by the book. That's right. We're going to do everything according to the scriptures. Romans chapter 4 and verse 15. If your Christian pastor can bring a law that says that we shouldn't drink wine, tell him to present his case. Until then, this scripture right here. Romans chapter 4 verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath. Uh -huh. For where no law is. For where no law is. Find me a law that says I cannot drink wine. Read. There is no transgression. With that, we say shalom. Shalom. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.